the word for you today. God can cancel your past, part three. This is Wednesday, September the 6th. Our scripture passage comes out of John chapter 19, verse 30. Jesus is on the cross. He's been hanging there for a few hours. It says, when he had received the drink, remember Jesus on the cross said, I thirst. So they lifted this vinegar thing up to him. You have to really be thirsty to drink that, huh? But when he received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Jesus knew he was near death on the cross. He said, it is finished. What did he mean by saying it is finished? He had done everything his father had asked him to do. He came, he lived a perfect life. He created the gospel message. He died on the cross for our sins, and he rose from the dead. He did everything up to this point, did everything except rising from the dead, which would happen on uh, the third day after this. But Jesus did what no one else could do. He was the perfect sacrifice for our sins. There's nothing that could be added to what Jesus did. He paid the price, our debts paid in full. Because of that, you know what? We are free from condemnation now and forever. Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says, Therefore there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Have you done things wrong in your past? Yes, we all have. Do you feel some shame from some of those things? Maybe we do. Well, you know what? Jesus died on the cross to take that shame away. We're now able, because of Jesus dying on the cross and our faith in him, we're now able to receive the Holy Spirit who comes into us and dwells in us. We're able to be each day becoming more and more like Jesus. We received eternal life, and then we get to spend eternity with God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, and free from the condemnation of the reminders of the past. Don't you just hate it when those memories come back that you, you wish you'd never done, but the enemy throws those memories back at us and just, he wants to, he wants to put us down. He wants to, to, uh, he wants to defeat us. So why do we hang on to the past? Sometimes when those thoughts come to your mind, do you just immediately dismiss them and move on? Or sometimes do you dwell on them? Well, sometimes we dwell on them and why do we hang on to the past? Well, sometimes it's good to remember the past. There's good memories. But what about those bad memories? We're familiar with our past, and to let go of those memories can be scary because we don't know what's going to take the place of that. We know what to expect with those bad memories, but we don't know what to expect with, with the uncertainty, the future. And so sometimes we, we hang on to what we're familiar with. Sometimes we feel like we must be punished. We don't deserve to be happy. Because we did those things in the past, I don't deserve to be happy. I should be punished. And, and so we kind of punish ourselves. You know the problem with that? Is when Jesus went to the cross, he said, I forgive your sins as far as the east is from the west. And we say, yeah, but God, I did this. And God said, you did what? See, he forgets them. He moves. He dem they go away. They go away. When we hang on to the past, it prevents him from being able to use us for in the future. Some of us aren't very usable because we live in the past. He doesn't want us to do that. He wants us to move forward. Philippians 4.8 says, Whatever is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on those things. When those bad thoughts come into your mind, you can't control what enters your mind, but what you can control is what you dwell on. So when those past shameful things that we've done come into our mind, take those and don't say, I'm not going to think about them because we will. Instead, think of something that is true, something that is noble, something that is right. Replace that shameful thought with something that is good. There was a London businessman and he was looking at a warehouse, purchase a warehouse. 
And so the seller of the warehouse met him and they went, they went through the warehouse looking at everything and, and the seller of the warehouse said, you know, I'll fix these windows, I'll clean things up. And the, the, the potential uh, buyer said, there's no need to do that. See, I don't want the warehouse, I want the site. I'm going to tear it all down and build something brand new. See, that's what God did in our lives. That's what Jesus did on the cross. When we accepted Jesus as our Savior, He took this, this person here who had done shameful things, and He says, I'm wiping it clean, and I'm going to build something new out of you. See, that's what Jesus wants to do with you and with me. He wants to build something new. Man, I need that. I need that. Because you can't build anything on my past things I've done. Uh, but Jesus can make something good. Would you let him do that today? See, how, how do I do that? We well, start by accepting Jesus as your Savior. Then you read the Bible and you spend time talking to him. And he'll tell you, either through the scripture or through a five-year-old once said, he speaks to me in my heart. You'll find out one way or the other and then just do what he tells you to do. And until you hear from him, something to do differently, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Put God first. And love your neighbor as yourself. And if we do those two things, it's going to take care of everything else. And what God will do is he will cancel the past. And he'll make something new in you. Let's start today if we've not been doing that. Have a good day.